Hey everyone, today we're going to be going over on how to create a listening loop in that loop. First, we're going to log on to our eEdge or MyKW login with MyKW.KW.com. Once we're on the home screen, we're going to click on the link right below My Transactions. It either might say Start eTransactions or Messages. Once we click on that, that will open up dot loop on another tab. So we're going to give this a minute just to load up. Now you should just refresh this real quick. Internet's not cooperating with us. Ah, uh, there we go. So once we open up, you should see a red, black, and white screen. If you see a blue or white screen, please let the agent services or market center know so they can hook you up properly to our dot loop account. So how do we create a loop? So before we go to a listing presentation, ideally we want to make a loop and create the forms. That way we can type them up and present them to our, our seller, either in person or electronically. First step is going to be hitting the red cross button where my cursor is right now. Once I click on that, it's going to ask me for the loop. Now, when we're working with a seller, we're going to be selling a property. So this program works great with an address. So let's start typing an address in. So I'm going to start putting an address in, 118 Third Street. Now notice as I'm typing, you're seeing some listings or some addresses appear below, right? So let's pretend we're really talking about Third Street in Troy, New York. So when I click on that, and let's pretend it's a brand new listing, it's going to transplant all of the address information, so the street, the, the number of the house, the town, the city, and the zip code as a title. Now below that, we're going to select a template. So I do think most of our agents here work in GCAR, so we're going to select either one of two options. It's either going to be a listing loop residential property or a buyer loop residential property. Since we're inputting a listing loop, we're going to click on listing loop and we're going to create a loop. Now once this opens up, it's going to add all the required forms and all the templates into your loop for you, saving you again more time. Now the reason why we're doing this is because everything you put in dot loop stays in dot loop and also allows us to customize it and not to worry about something that's missing. Okay. Once we open up the loop, we then have our listing for sale labels. Next one over is loop, is loop status. So ideally, before we go to the presentation, we're, we're already having our uh, paperwork uh, filled out. So it's going to be under the status pre-listing. Once we have this go live, we're going to put it as active listing and eventually under contract and sold. But for right now, it's under pre-listing because it's not live on the MLS yet. Okay, once we do that, I can scroll down to the people section. Now notice your name will be in here. In this case we're using Elizabeth's account. And also something called admin for Keller Williams. That actually is us. So once we say once you uh, do leadership team, once you send this to us, it allows us to make sure this document or documents are compliant. All right. But of course, since you can work with buyers and sellers, your role is not on a specific Side. So you want to make sure that your role is to whatever you're um, serving, the listing or the buying side. In this case, it's the listing agent. Next, we're going to add our seller. In this case, we'll be working with Sally Seller. And we have the choice of putting her email in there. So let's say I know her email. So Sally at AOL.com. And the, and the next thing that you want to do is make sure you, as the role is going to match who the person is. In this case, it's a because we're listing Sally's house. So we're going to hit add, and she's going to be added to the people to loop. Now this allows us to share or design the paperwork for that specific person. So she's not going to see anything right now until you share it with her or the seller you're working with. Okay. Below you'll see tasks. We made a basic template out to show you what, what is needed for compliance for a single family listing property. Okay. Now scrolling back up, what we're going to do next is we're going to template or design the document. You can do that easily by clicking on the checkbox next to where it says listing folder. 
and then we have the ability now to open it so I hit the open button once we open that it's going to give a verification box it's going to it's going to ask us okay so who is who in this transaction and also confirming the property name and location so I scroll down notice who seller one is that's our Sally seller that we just added scrolling down further under listing agent one you should see yourself in this case Elizabeth going down a bit going down further you'll then see the property address all right so usually if you put the property address correctly in there as a title it will automatically input in here but in this case it did not so let's just make sure we put the address in there again it's 115 third street and that's going to be in Troy New York 12180. All right, so I'm going to hit autofill, and it might take a few seconds, but you'll start to see items populate. In this case, on the listing contract, you'll see the property address and the owner populate here. All right, so again, this allows you to, to fill out less amount of content each time, saving you more time on your transaction paperwork. From there, we are just going to go scroll down and fill in what we can on each of the required fields on this form and the other forms later on. Okay, so all we need, all we need to do to type in um, any of these boxes is just click on the box and then start typing away. All right, so I can start typing. In this case, I'll just put some text in here so you can notice what happens. And then you have the ability to format it up here on the black toolbar. Okay. Now, once we scroll down, you'll start to see red boxes. Now, red boxes indicate what you need to sign. All right. In this case, you're signing on the bottom right hand of each of, this, each of these pages. So once I hover over that hit sign now, that then shows me my name. Now, make sure your legal name is spelled out. No aliases and no nicknames. Compliance is dictates that we must have our full legal name as a signature. So let's say this is correct. We can hit adopt and sign. And now either initial or our full signature is now located where the required field should be. As I scroll down, again, there's more red boxes. Let's scroll back up and then I can just hover over it, hit sign now, and it will sign automatically. All right. The rest of the forms, like the agenda, need to be filled out, obviously. But we're not going to go through each of these forms. If you have any questions, make sure you, you talk to the broker on call or an associate broker in our market center. We can give you the proper information to fill out these forms. All right, so let's say we fill out all these forms and we pre-sign them. <clears throat> I can now save it. And now I have the ability to do a couple of things, either sharing it electronically via the share button or hovering over other actions. I can scroll them further. I can download it or print it, all right? These two options are great, especially if you're going on a listing presentation and you want to be ready just in case your seller, in this case Sally, wants to go ahead and how do you sign with her and list her house immediately, all right? If we want to share it, however, we can just go hit share. And that, again, pops, populates a verification box that's going to say how many documents you want to share, in this case it's seven the name of the people in the loop who are going to receive this, in this case, Sally. And then you have a permission level that says can sign. Now, please note, every time you include an addendum that requires your um, seller or buyer to fill out forms with text, you want to make sure that you change it from can sign to can fill and sign. That way they can properly fill it out. Below you'll see an add message. This message will appear in an invite via email to the selected email that you put as that person and notify that person about your message regarding what to do going further. Now they'll receive a message that will clearly state your name and an urgent document in the email subject so they'll know it's coming directly from you and not about leak or spam or a spam system. Okay? So then I hit share. Once I hit share, it should give you a confirmation. I can hit done. And now I can hit back. Awesome. So now I want to see waiting on others, and that is telling me that I'm waiting on Sally Seller to sign those documents electronically. Okay. And that's how you 
create a listing, and then send that listing electronically to your sellers or download it.